everybody, welcome back to the show. I'm very excited to introduce our guest to you, Christina Fry, who is a marketing consultant, an author, and the creator of the Generosity Practice Mindset and the Innate Marketing Genius Tools and methodology. And she helps brilliant mission-based entrepreneurs look smart and get hired. And we are really excited to get into this conversation with you right now. Christina, welcome to Monday Morning Mojo. Thanks so much, Anna. It's great to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to hear more about what you do and how you help people. But before we kind of unpack that, tell me a little bit about how you got into doing this work. Sure. So I have a couple of big, I don't know, life steps that got yeah. me here. So I'll just take, you know, one at a time and please stop me. So one of the things that I have done forever is I've been on a pretty strong spiritual path. I started that in Berkeley, California around 1998. It's been a while. And it was really, I was doing a lot of like meditating and focusing on s staying in my sixth chakra. I'm going deep here. And I don't know if that's and for to someone you. who may not know about the chakras, the six. Yeah, six it's chakras. an energy center. Yeah, because we have these energy centers up and down our spine, yeah. the main ones. And so the sixth chakra is where you see, you see energy. It's where you go when you're drifting off to sleep and things are starting to, you just have those images come into your mind. So it was unbelievable just being able to stay there and use the information that you get when you're actually there. That mm -hmm. was gobsmacking. I never in a million years thought that I would go there. And I was raised Catholic and just was like a good Catholic. Girl. I understand. Like, energy management stuff, you know, awareness stuff. So while I was doing that training, I created my own tool, so to speak. And it was very casual, it was super accidental. And it was basically... You know, let's say you want something in life. A lot of times people say, well, just visualize it and let it go to right. the end of the earth and just don't think about it and let it just manifest. I'm sure you've heard stuff like that. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So my problem was every single time I did that, I couldn't let it go. And I was always looking for my stuff. <laughs> and so I did this thing where I'm like, well, how about I just visualize sending something out just because it's fun. So I remember there was this moment where I saw a purple rose. I was meditating in my parents' basement in Connecticut, and I saw a purple rose. It's like game changer moment for me. And I sent it off, and there was something about not having any attachment to how, you know, it was just like, that was fun. Mm. I really liked giving that out. And so thought, like from that moment, I started doing that, and people noticed in myself wow, you just seem really different. You seem a lot more confident. You're not as needy as you used to be. It's just all these very positive things. And fast forward, I just wasn't ready to share that with anyone, but I always knew that it was going to have my back. There's something, I mean, I'm sure you can feel this intuitively, Anna, like when you give for the sake of giving, when you simply close your eyes and imagine how much you could benefit others, it's yes. just such a powerful thing. It even is. You don't, right? Even if it's just like in your head. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, you know, I talk a lot about leadership. I'm in leadership every day. And for me, it's always about the other person. And it's always about, you know, this energy that I give but also receive. And, you know, when you move yourself out of the equation and you focus on what you can do to help the other person, whether it's in a leadership moment, a sales moment, a conversation, right? Then you're able to really get clear about what they need at that moment. And your intuition does kick in and you start to understand something more than, you know, whatever could be like the agenda you thought you might've walked in on, right? So the intuition is, and I don't know if it's something we talk enough about how to use our intuition to, you know, to really our advantage. So Yes, we could have a long conversation about yeah. that, believe me. But here's what ended up happening. I finally started sharing this thing mm -hmm. in 2014. And I was at a crossroads in my career. There were a lot of things up in the air. And I could have either panicked and gone into massive health problems, which had happened before, or 
I could use this tool that I always knew would have my back. So I did. And it worked pretty quickly. Like, you know, when you activate a part of yourself, like the intuition again, yes, right? Yes. You're like, I knew exactly who I need to talk to. And it put me in front of the exact right people I needed to get great projects from, good income from, et cetera, et cetera. And so that was like, that's it. I'm going to share this now and just see if I can teach it. Because not everyone went to, you know, the Berkeley Psychic Institute in right, California no. <laughs> to learn this kind of thing. So that's when I started going to yoga studios and having workshops and working with people one-on-one and any office or nonprofit that would have me. I was just like, let me just try this. Yeah. So I finally had a 40-person field study where people just used it straight for 30 days solid and then gave me input on how it helped it them and how they were using it. So it just was like, tell me what's going on. You know, is this working? Is it not working? Did I share it with you in the right way? Are you getting what you want out of it? Are you enjoying being this creative? Because it asks you to just be like, what would I like to give out today? It's like a creative process every time, right? So, so two questions are, are like popping up for me, right? One is to yeah. help our audience understand a little bit more about the tool itself. And who are like some of your ideal clients and who you can help, you know, using the tool? Absolutely. So I think I can answer that by telling you what happened at the end of this field study, which is sure. the business owners in the group, whether it was real estate agents or coaches or, you know, shop owners, there was a shop owner in, what was it, Bolivia. I was like, wow, this is so interesting. And, but they were in charge of their own brand and usually their own marketing. And they said to me, I don't know what's happening, but for some reason, I am much more consistent with my marketing. I love selling. I'm better at the negotiation table ever since I started using this tool. And so that, I mean, I, I just, and in answer to your question directly, I do work with people who are really, really brilliant at what they do. They typically have a unique approach mm -hmm. and they don't quite know how to communicate that. And they're just mm -hmm. ready to stand tall as an expert without being super egotistical about that. Like, yeah. how can I be this really loving expert and in my you, field to get great clients? Don't you find that a lot of professionals are uncomfortable really talking about themselves and selling themselves? And so they minimize a lot of their talent or they minimize some of what they have to offer because they're too afraid to sound like they're bragging or, or I'm not sure what fear, sh you know, shows up for them. But I find that a lot of times people, they're not comfortable promoting themselves. Absolutely. And I would say one of the ways that is, I think, very straightforward to get past that is to focus on how much potential there is. Mm. If you really lean in and help people, if it's not about you, like you were saying earlier, if it's not about you and it's really about the help you're going to offer right? and the people you're serving, then you're just going to, I think that's why these people in the field study were like, I'm so much more bold and friendly. And Love generous. that. Yeah. Yeah, because I believe we all have these amazing gifts to offer. And if we're not willing to, you know, put ourselves out there, then we can't help someone or change their world through our service or product or whatever it is. And uh, I think a lot of people who listen to Monday Morning Mojo are entrepreneurs or in a uh, sales type position working with people. And so this, I think, is such a great conversation to help people to connect to a message or connect to a brand that maybe they know, but they just don't know how to articulate. Right. And that's where you come in, I believe. Yeah. And that actually brings me to the the second piece. I have one mm -hmm. like the, it started with the mindset tool and then it moved into more of a business application. So I'll just really quickly share with you how that all went yeah. down. So after I did that first field study and I realized, wow, the business owners, right, all the stuff they were telling me, I wanted to try helping all business owners, only business owners with their marketing plan. I just had this weird sense that if I help them with their marketing plan, using some of the generosity practice way of thinking about things mm -hmm. that I would help them find their voice. Right. And so what ended up without connecting too many dots there, I'll just say 
I help them understand what their absolute favorite way of helping other humans is, which oh, by I the way, now that. that turned into an archetype. You and I talked before we started recording about like, yes. are you a steady presence? Are you an adventure guy? That stuff all came from, I now call that your marketing archetype, but it all came from me being curious. 40 different business owners beyond, okay, you're an accountant, you're a real estate agent, you're a financial advisor, like you as a human, how do you like to transform other people's lives? What's your innate way of helping? So that became the marketing archetype. And I realized, hey, there's five really strong categories here. And that became the marketing archetype assessment. So now I go around to podcasts like yours or talks or anywhere and you know, in five minutes, people can take the assessment and find out if they're a nurturer, an adventure guide, a door opener, a study presence, or a celebrator. And what that means, it really just points to what is your deepest why in service to others. Would you be willing to share a little bit, like maybe a sentence or two about each of those archetypes? Absolutely. So what was the first one? Yeah. So the nurture is when you want to make it safe for others to thrive. Mm. That's your deepest why. You're How do people really show up as that nurturer usually? Yeah, I'm a nurturer. There's a million, you know, there's so many types of each of these, but I will tell you that like, you just want to nurture people's, if they are safe, then they will go for it. Like that's the motivation. So for me, I'm a nurturer of great ideas in others. Like if I'm in a room, I just want to spark thinking, like great okay. thinking. And I do whatever it takes. You know, when I give my talks, the specific way I nurture is to like, how can I say this? How do I actually do it? I show them their potential and give them the right questions to ask based on their inner nature. Mm -hmm. Because yes, let's say you're a nurturer. I also know the right questions to ask to pull out that nurture in you. Sure. Right. Yeah. Okay. Adventure guide. Adventure guide is... When you tend to be a little bit impatient that the people you serve are not going for it because you're like, you can totally go for it. Like, here's what I see for you. And you tend to be bold in the way you reach for your own goals. You kind of live by example. You're probably an adventure guide there. Yeah. The bold, yeah. Modelers of how to do life to the fullest. Yeah. Like pushing past your limitation. Like you can do this. You could do it bigger. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and again, like I, I know I've said this twice, but like you live by example. So it's, mm-hmm. which is very powerful. Mm-hmm. Door opener is the third category. And that is when you love to open up new doors of perception. It's like you're a natural educator. I call these people a diamond mind because there's, they love to look at all the facets of something and multidimensional thinking, like all that. Uh, yeah. So Maybe that's a door analytical. opener. Right. Pulling it apart. I mean, they can be, but I mean, you can have ideas that are not analytical. Oh, okay. You know, it could be, you could be an artist. So who sure. knows? But yeah. And then a steady presence, which we were talking about, you had some steady presence in you. And that that's sort of the pillar. The people who are like a deep treasure trove of resources, whether it's expertise, a straight up network, like the people you know. And, and even ways of thinking of things like, and you love to have people come to you rather than chasing and there's specific ways to market. And then the last category is celebrators. Celebrators are the people who love to bring the good life and they do it with their own special flair. Most of the other categories think that they should be a celebrator, (laughs) but it's really the, like you just enjoy things more easily often. And your flair could be anything from humor you know, fun, artistic sense, design sense, all that. Like it depends on who you are. There's a lot of variation, but yeah, that's a celebrator. Great. And so you have an assessment that helps people understand which archetype they might be. And can could they have more than one? They A great question, Anna. Yes. And it's very common. I would say maybe 60% of people who take the assessment end up, maybe even more, end up having two. I mean, I'm a nurturer with a side of door opener. We determine that you're a steady presence with a side of adventure guide. You know, it just, you just never know. Yes. So once someone figures out their archetype or archetypes, like let's use me as an example, right? So you say, tell everyone again, mine are. 
your steady presence mm -hmm. and uh, your secondary is adventure guide. So how do I use that? How do I take this knowledge of my archetype now and actually apply that in my marketing or in my attraction of, you know, bringing in people into my world? Sure. So, and by the way, when you take the assessment, you're going to find out even if you're, you know, I'm just talking directly to the listener now, even if you're not like Anna and you're going to get all the download now of what that means to be Anna, but like, let's say you're a right. celebrated with a side of door opener. Once you take the assessment, the emails you get after that will answer the same questions. Oh, so, great. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So to answer your question, Anna, uh, a steady presence does really well when they dive deep into what they know and like for example going to a conference or taking a course or whatever mm -hmm. that is relevant to your audience and then simply sharing it now what's interesting about this and this could be emails it could be a talk it could be like us doing a podcast right here the interesting thing is you can actually go on and on and on and totally over our heads and we don't care the reason is all we care about from you is that you understand what the heck you're talking about so we can come to you when we need you. It's a really interesting thing. I've watched several study presences give talks where I'm like, I have no idea what they're saying. And I just I just know who I'm going to call when I need to. <laughs> interesting. Right? Like yeah. That's the result you want. The other thing is study presences do really well when they lean into the pillar aspect of them. And what I mean by that is they can get involved in their community in a way that's, you know, just in your local community or otherwise to do like nonprofit work at donating, like any, any sort of giving back where again, you're operating as a pillar. Like this person isn't going anywhere there, you know, we can lean on that. We can trust them. And if you share about that, it's like, gosh, we just, we love this person. Hmm. We want to be around and it's almost like magnetic it's hard to even describe why that's so compelling but to me it's like if you're naturally a steady presence and you're acting like one people feel it mm -hmm. it's the and authenticity it. comes through yeah yeah i mean i'm curious when i say that to you anna where has this maybe already i mean i'm sure you do this stuff in droves you've you've been a business owner for a while like how are you how are well, you showing steady presence yeah, I mean, in addition to being an entrepreneur, <clears throat> excuse me, and a business leader myself, I've been coaching for 14 years. I love teaching. I love, you know, this podcast is a platform for that. So, you know, if we're using my archetype, you know, as just an illustration here, I can say what you're sharing resonates with me. And it sounds uh, very true to who I am and how I show up. And I think I'm always looking for ways to contribute, ways to I feel that if I'm going to, I love learning, right? I'm an avid learner. So if I'm going to learn something, then I want to share it. I want to teach it and, you know, look to find the audience who could benefit from the knowledge. So things like this podcast are a great platform for me. So I feel connected to what you're saying. And I'm assuming that, you know, if we go back to looking at those five archetypes and we look at the people that you work with and how you help let's say a business owner, understand theirs, I would think that clarity then the next step for anybody is that the clarity opens up their mindset to other possibilities and other ways to connect with their audience, right? And that's the, the word, you nailed it, connect, mm. right? So I was really thinking about this recently, you know, who is it that can benefit from figuring out their marketing archetype. It's people who want to not just get clients, but to truly connect when they market. Yeah, so authentic not selling, right? It's not about just selling for selling sake. It's knowing that there's a reason why you're offering what you're offering, because you're probably offering a piece of yourself in the process. Yeah, I mean, if you're the brand, and let's face it, a lot of times you're the brand. Sure. So, yeah. you know, you want, you're kind of selling I mean, that's a horrible way to put it, but you're selling your relationship with them. Right. Well, and I think that it's the beginning of creating trust, right? Because, and I think that, you know, we all want to feel that connection because it does build trust and it just builds a sense of, oh, this person gets me, right? 
because yeah. that's a big part of connection. So is there one particular industry you find that you work with most? Sometimes I notice that happens where we tend to attract more of the same professional. Who do you work with the most? So recently, financial advisors has been. A big oh, thing. interesting. Financial uh -huh. advisors, wellness professionals, coaches of every kind you can imagine. Sure. And then real estate agents. So when you work with someone, let's say you mentioned coaches. So I think that's interesting, right? Because that's a big part of their brand is really selling. I guess we'll say it's selling, but it's really helping people feel connected to their energy because especially in coaching, there's a big trust factor and there's, you know, there's really an opportunity to have someone feel like, okay, if I collaborate with this person, I can be open, I can be honest, right? Mm -hmm. So there's vulnerability in that. So in a lot of ways, you show up as a coach and a consultant to your clients. And so how do you build that trust factor and connect with your client as much as you're helping them do the same, right? Well, when you say build the trust factor, do you mean people who are thinking of working with me or people who are working with me? Well, I guess it would start with people who are thinking, right, of working with you. So someone listening to this episode right now might be curious and still not even sure exactly what it would look like, right? Yeah. So how, what could you leave with them today that would get someone to take action and actually reach out to you? So I'll say two things, maybe three. One is to start with the assessment. Just take the yeah. assessment. That will give you answers and give you a feel for this work. Two is there's an introductory workbook, depending on what your archetype is. So if you're a nurturer, there's a nurturer workbook. If oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. So it's a pretty low cost workbook that you can buy. And then in there are prompts to start creating content based on your strengths. And also just a review, like a pretty thorough review about what you bring to the table. So that's that's step two. And then step three, I'll just mention it, is having a power hour with me. Okay. Basically just dipping your toe in the water. Like let's start giving this flavor to your entire marketing approach, right? So then you would help them actually integrate that into their marketing plan? Yeah. Cool. Yes. And then that, you know, I have a, a much more in-depth way of working with people, but that's a good place to start. That's great. What's a question I haven't asked you that you would love for me to ask? Because Well, I wanted to share here. with you, yeah. because you're a study presence and an adventure guide. I wanted to share with you what the adventure guide looks like when they market. Oh, yeah. Okay, um, let's do it. Yeah, just cover that real quick. So an adventure guide oftentimes thinks that they have to go on and on about their expertise, which is interesting because that's what is study presence. I'm recommending that you do. But for an adventure guide... We just want to see, all right, fine. You th you're you telling me that I can have all these great things in my future. Show me what it looks like to achieve that. Hmm. So it's much more like the goal, the end result, the, the image of it all. And so I hate to put too many details on this, but I will say images, really good for adventure guides. The more imagery in your, like, if you're going to lean one way or the other, just show us rather than tell us mm. it's the best. And it's not like we don't care about your expertise. We just don't need you to lead with it. Interesting. Okay. So if I'm your client and I was working with you, let's say, you know, we're looking at my coaching as a business, right? Mm -hmm. What would be a practical strategic plan or part of my strategic plan? What could I do, even if it's a just a slight shift in how I am marketing myself or even presenting? What might you offer up as advice? Okay, I'll start with your steady presence side of things. So I would have you look, and this might take a bit, I would have you look very carefully at five representative clients that you work with mm. and ask yourself, what is it that if I studied it or under understood it better, what is it I need to deep dive on to serve them better? Now, I'm hoping since you're a steady presence, you love that question. It's like, oh, I could study something. <laughs> uh-huh. So funny. You like it. read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I can I can roll up my sleeves on that. The, the key is that it needs to come from your peeps because, you know, it's fun to study, but it has to be on their behalf, right? So then, then once you study it, 
then you turn around and you just share it. And that can be through any of your channels. You could do a specific podcast episode on it. You mm. could do so. I mean, it's basically you standing really tall as this formidable pillar of understanding, deep understanding about things that matter to those people. It's like, I got your back. That's what you're saying behind it all. It's like, I got your back. Don't worry about it. Like, I've been paying attention. I know that people wrestle with this. I've studied it. And here's here's what you need to know. I mean, can you yes. feel the power of that when someone stands tall in that? Yes, definitely. And And I will say that, you know, hearing you share details of my archetype with me, it's very validating because I believe we all know in our soul who we are, yet we push some things down sometimes or we have a blind eye to it for different reasons. And so with all of these assessments, when you really are genuinely taking this assessment, you get back the results that are so you, it's validating and it really gives you permission to show up more as yourself. Because that I think is a big message I always try to get across to people is don't waste your time trying to be someone that you're not. And if you stand in your true power and you stand in your authenticity, there's a lot of really good stuff there that people need and you'll attract who you're meant to help and who you're meant to serve. And so I love that you are really, a, you're a guide to people to, to understand that about themselves. And you must find this to be very gratifying. It is. And I want to say something about the word authenticity because it does get used a lot. Sure. One thing that, I mean, I see myself as kind of a nerd of authenticity. So I'm just going <laughs> to point out a couple of things that I think are sort of very helpful. Um, because authenticity could be anything from, well, I really like raising chickens. Let me talk about that in my marketing for life coaching. And you know what? I'm sure there's a way to do that. That would be hilarious and fun and super relevant. Um, also, it might not be relevant. You bring up a great I'm... point here that, you know, it has to be relatable. You have to find an audience. Yeah, I get it. I mean, we're using a silly example with raising chickens, but it's true. And it's challenging as as a coach or consultant to help people because you, you're not trying to say that, you know, this thing that you're so passionate about isn't worth being passionate about. It's just we have to teach people how to package it differently, right, and how to to offer in a way that others can relate. <laughs> and by the way, little plug for generosity practice, when you are contemplating how much you love offering things to life every day, that stuff, it just is so much easier. Meaning, okay, fine, talk about your chickens. Like do it in a way that will make the people you serve lives better. Mm -hmm. And so when you're in that mindset in the first place, like it's, it's right there. It's low hanging fruit. You can talk about chickens all day long and it's going to make those people's lives better. Yeah. And I know when we had spoken just recently to prepare for, for today, you know, and you were talking a little bit about the generosity practice and one of the things that really I think comes through when people dig into it or read the book, it's, it's that you have everything that you need, right? You have all the resources that you need and it's just how do you put it out there into the world? Yeah. And let me ask you, Anna, when you say you have everything you need, do you mean that as humans, it's like we have untapped inner resources that sure. are sometimes like, how do you even, is that what you're yeah, well, there's always a way to take your natural gifts and develop them or learn new things and skills, right? I, yes, but I do believe that we have this untapped potential and that we do, we have these amazing gifts that our, our first job is to figure out what they are. And then the second job is to figure out how to, you know, connect with people who need them. And that's really, I think, what inspired me to ask you to come on to the show because I love that you really help people to see that and because I think a lot of times people will waste unnecessary amounts of energy on ignoring what is already right in their own toolbox so true and one thing I love when I give talks out in the world or speak with podcasters like yourself is trumpeting the great fact that we all have this innate capacity to just love helping people like it's it's fuel for us, it helps others, and therefore everybody wins. It's like this third space where it all gets better. It's not like, 
well, either my needs are met, your needs are met, you know, too bad. We can't have both. Not true. Yeah, but what if my needs could be met because I help you meet yours? Exactly. Correct? Yeah. That's exactly what this is all about. Yeah, I love that. Love it. So, I'll, okay, I'm going to come back to what's the question I haven't asked that you wish I would ask? <laughs> well, I have one that people ask me almost every single talk I give in public, and that is, well, I see all five of those archetypes in myself. Like, what about that? Ah. Like, okay, and I'm here to say yes, 100%. This model is not meant to take any of that away. Please mm. be a celebrator some days, Anna, please. Sure, yeah, that but makes here, sense. You want to bring the good life? Of course you do. Yeah, so, and I do. <laughs> right? If you know me, you know I do. Yeah, but I'm, so what, I'm sure there's like a dominant one that we just really ease into, right? The problem I'm trying to solve with this model is the fact that marketing by its very nature is expansive. It's like, do more. And I'm not even faulting it for that. That's just how it goes. We just always want to be out there connecting with more people. And therefore, the workload gets overwhelming and the message gets diluted. It just mm -hmm. happens in a blink of an eye. So this model is there for when you need focus, you need uh, motivation or energy. It's like, where's the juice of your message? Where's the, how, do, how do you want to connect more deeply and meaningfully with people who might hire you? Mm -hmm. Those are the challenges that this addresses. Yeah. And it's a celebrator. It's you so important. And it's so important today, right? Because the world is noisier than ever, <laughs> right? There's a lot happening. There are a lot of messages flying at us every day. And if you are looking to take your business to another level, it, you know, it starts with knowing who you are and how you can offer that and what it, like in, in this um, particular example, what is your archetype? Because then that's how you really get into a lane that you can drive in because you could easily fall into the me too category, right? Like everyone's coming out there with their message. You're like, oh yeah, me too. I do that. You know, yes, that that's me. I, I, oh yeah, I like that person over there. But at the end of the day, how do you stand out and how do you really clearly convey that brand that is so, that is so you and, and do it in a way that feels not just good, but feels like you're in your strength zone, I would imagine. Exactly. And again, we can feel that if you're in your zone, right. You, we just know it. Yeah, and you're going to attract more business just because of that. Exactly. Yeah. I will say that for someone that's like, well, this is great self-awareness, where does the marketing come in? And yeah. I will say that when I work more deeply with clients, not only does this archetype help you create your messaging, like your deep message and then everything else besides, but it also helps determine what is your one core strategy that if you did it for 45 to 60 minutes a day would move your entire business forward. Love that. So, yeah. That's so, also so, part of the process. And then I help them launch it, whether it's a podcast good. or talk or webinar series or whatever it is. So it's really uh, working with you is also going to create results. It's not just about, you know, some clarity and understanding, you know, some theory around who they are, how they show up. It's also then taking that, and figuring out what is the the right strategy really for me to get my business to another level and attract the people I want to work with. So I very, think that very, very seriously, it, yeah, it's like every business owner that I work with has like the right strategy for their business needs and who they are and how they naturally connect with other humans. Like everybody has that. It's That's just a matter fantastic. of paying attention to it and letting it kind of bubble up to the surface. That's my job all day long. And how long do you tend to work with your clients? Is there a certain amount of time or is it just ongoing? Or yes. you... The boutique coaching program that I call Marketing for Humans is four months long. Four months. Okay. So they could really see their, their business in a different place within that period of time. That's exciting. Yes. And the, the end result of that is that your big marketing strategy is now launched and you are off to the races to get your clients. Great. All right. So let's give the audience some information about how to connect with you and how to find you, Christina, because I know that I trust you've piqued a lot of interest today in this episode. So how can they work with you and how can they find you? Yeah, thank you, Anna. So the first place is to go to 
innatemarketinggenius.com forward slash archetype. Nice. And that's where you can take the assessment. When you're there and if you want to just chat with me, you know, you'll see the link. It's a 30 minute intro session. So I know sometimes it's like, yeah, I don't really know her yet. Let me just check out the fine. But if you want to do that, that's there. And then you, once you take the assessment, you'll have an invitation to get that intro workbook. And also if you want a power session, that will be in there too. Great. So what's next for you? Are you working on any big projects this year? I am putting together a group program. I'm dying to have a bunch of business owners in a Zoom room helping each other get excited about their own authentic voice. Nice. So I've been doing this very, I call it like a magical, it is kind of a magical journey that I take my business, like my clients on. And I want to, I want people to be able to talk about what they go through. It's very transformational and moving. So I'm going to like slow it all down into maybe four or five weeks. I'm working on it right now. Nice. And it'll be things like, hey, what are my marketing demons? Let's talk about that. What is it that stops me from getting out there? Yeah. And then yeah. Stuff like, what do I really, really want? Mm -hmm. Like, what is that magic recipe that if I could get out there and that's my experience? And then the rest of it is like, okay, now we're going to go into magic land and create that. Like, kind of, I don't know if you know Joe Dispenza. Of course, guy. yes. Yeah. So that guy, it's like Joe Dispenza style. Like, let's make this real. Fine. Right? Okay. And have that be in jolly community instead of just with me in a conference room, which is great too. But I think there's a place for people to explore their authentic marketing voice in yeah. community. So I'm working on that. Yeah. And I used the term attraction before. We know Joe Dispenza and his work around law of attraction. And that's really what I think, if, if you agree, I think one thing we would want someone to take away from this conversation is that it is about that energy and putting out yourself in a way that is attracting people to you and your message, right? It's true. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a really amazing group and I'd love to learn more about it myself. So well, okay. you'll have to, you know, send me some information about that. I will keep you posted. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, I appreciate good. it. Very good. Well, thank you for joining me today, Christina. This was a great conversation and, you know, we'll make sure that all that information is in the show notes too, so that anyone listening can really connect with you. So thanks again for being here and, and it, we may talk to you again in the future. You never know. Yeah. Who knows? I appreciate it being here. It was great. All right. Take care. Thanks again, everyone. We'll see you soon.